James Hilliard here. Welcome to our event brought to you by WEI. You are in the very right place for the Refresh Your Infrastructure Playbook with HPE Electra Storage. Again, brought to you by WEI in partnership with HPE and Intel. Appreciate their support for the program. Let me give you an idea of what we're going to be doing here over uh, the next period of time. Uh, first 30 minutes or so, that's our tech talk. And we'll be spending a little bit of time first off with Mark DeChico, who is with us. He's a client executive with WEI. couple minutes with Mark about the WEI story and how they are out there helping customers across the board with their modernization plans, obviously focused on some data and storage for this conversation. Uh, then I'm really happy to have uh, with us Rick Banzi. He is part of the North America Primary Storage Solutions Business Unit. He's the business manager there with HPE. Glad to have him on board. We'll probably focus for about 20 minutes or so. That's a deeper dive into our tech talk. Uh, definitely, we're going to share some information about HPE ProLiant, their DL380 series. Uh, they're up to the Gen 11 servers now of that series. Those, of course, are powered by fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. So we'll talk a little bit about the hardware that really uh, is helping folks modernize their storage approach. That's the Tech Talk, first 30 minutes or so. Then we're really happy to bring on our featured guest for the day. It's tight end from the New England Patriots. Hunter Henry will be with us. About 45 minutes that we have talking with Hunter. We'll definitely talk some kind of sports and business ties. Also have some opportunity to talk some good old football with Hunter. With that, we do have a lot to get to. So, Mark, what I want to do is, since this is the beginning and we're football themed, I'm going to kick it off. I don't have the longest of legs, so you should be able to receive this and get a pretty okay. decent return uh, as you tell us about WEI. Let me throw it to you. I like that. Well done, sir. All right, James. Um, so let me go ahead and get this kicked off over here. Uh, I'd love to tell you a little bit about WEI. I've been around for over 30 years now, right? We're a value-added reseller and tech provider um, that uh, will be around for another 30 years. Uh, we were head, headed by uh, Belisario and, and Leslie Rosas and a great place to, to be. Uh, up, up over 100,000 square uh, feet these days. Uh, we just added another building in the back because we're warehousing a lot of products for our customers and also added some additional integration area so that we can kind of do some configs and staging for our customer ahead of shipping that gear and just add more value, right? Uh, about 100 uh, employees, 180 employees today, 80 of whom are certified engineers. So I think that... Um, speaks volumes when, when you talk about where we're investing, right? It's about bringing smart people to the table to, to help your projects be successful. Uh, Debt-free, privately owned, um, you know, those things really help us to be flexible with our customers and, and making sure that we can put you first and, and do right by you. Uh, minority owned, obviously, um, you know, that's, I think, important these days to, to take into consideration. Um, we're about 400 million in products sold per year. And that just speaks to, I guess, the scale, 25% of which ships globally. So again, uh, speaking to our reach, we have very large customers, about 350 customers in total. Uh, really does run the gamut in terms of industries, but you can see some of the, the Fortune 500 customers that we serve today. Got all sorts of uh, nods and rec uh, recognition around being supplier of the year, partner of the year, um, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, again, want to highlight the expertise and customer success section over here that really has to do with, uh, again, the, the deep engineering bench and having a lot of certifications um, so that uh, we know technology and help you have the best experience possible when adopting. If you look at WEI and where we started, like a lot of bars, we started in the data center, right? You know, traditional like the storage, the compute, uh, DR, um, you know, it's sort of transitioned over to HCI and, and doing different uh, data center consolidations and colo planning, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we added additional practices along the way. Our network and security practice is probably one of our bigger practices these days, lots that we can do there um, around access and SD-WAN and, and data center networking and campus networking. Those are all different teams that we have under that umbrella and they all 
are very communicative and work together to help you know provide a complete network solution for our customers. We've also uh, beefed up our cybersecurity practice. So whether it's you know cloud security, network security, endpoint security, IoT application security, identity and access management, there's a lot that we can focus on with you around cyber. Uh, we also have a, a very strong cloud practice with a lot of experts in, on on staff around Azure and AWS um, that, that can help with all sorts of things, cloud, whether it's computing management, uh, cost optimization, right? Um, I think that's something that I hear from my customers a lot about. Really spending a lot, would like to tune this. How, how can you help? Uh, we certainly can. Uh, there's things that we can do around DevOps. We have an in-house DevOps team. So for automation, containerization, um, uh, lifecycle management, uh, bounce it off us. We're here for you. And then, you know, different things with, you know, the, the aggregators, public cloud, co-location, connectivity. Uh, we are a full service VAR. It'd probably be easier to tell you the things that we don't do versus uh, what we do do. But if you have any questions, certainly let us know. Just want to leave this slide with uh, around project management and staff log. We have great teams that can help in that way too. It's not just technologies. Uh, we know a lot of great people in IT so we can help place resources. So what do we do above and beyond? Um, I would say that we're, we're adding value throughout the entire engagement. It's about having meaningful um, I guess, experience with technologies long before a PO is ever even cut. And how do we do that? Well, we've, uh, we have about $5 million in OEM gear sitting in our lab, and we have a lot of experts that know that technology, so we can do demos and POCs and labs and workshops. Um, you know, we can do those in person or HQ in Salem, or we can, we can uh, you know, do remote, whatever you'd like, but it's about you know, not hiding experts behind a, a sow. It's about pulling in these SMEs um, on the front end to to help you to kind of play with this technology and make the right decisions. And so we can do that as part of a pre-sales effort with you. Um, and then once you do make the decision and you purchase that technology, there's a lot that we can do around integration. Like I said earlier, um, you know, we like to, uh, you know, provide services wherever possible to free your resources up to do other things. And then once it is sold, obviously, um, you know, continue to support you on, on an ongoing basis. Uh, there's also other ways that we can add value around uh, holding gear, right? Um, how many times have you, have you tried to put in an order for a switch or an AP and had to sit, sit there for a few months waiting for it? Well, the more we know you, um, the better able we are to share some risk with you and to stock our shelves with technology that you like and uh, and create that just-in-time model. So um, certainly customer-owned inventory is, is something we're bringing to our customers of value. We already kind of talked about integration and what that means, but I will tell you that every box that comes through WEI, it, it gets open, whether it's, you know, we're doing integration or not. We like to fire up that equipment, you know, make sure that there's zero dead in arrival go further. So you'll find WEI packing tape on that versus like the OEM, because there's a lot that we can do with getting it caught up to speed and the different firmware and things like that. Um, again, freeing up your resources and knowing that when you go forward with a project that, uh, you know, things are going to work. We ship globally. Uh, we uh, have landed gear in 120 countries around the world. So if you think back to some of the customers that we serve, certainly their needs are global and we're built for it. Um, come take a tour of our HQ. You can see the operation in action. I think that kind of opens eyes. And then lastly, just want to give you a little bit about the partnership between WEI and HPE. Um, you know, have you know, some of the engineers listed here and some of the technologies that we know and that we have uh, on, you know, in our um, in our sandbox for our customers. But I think if I were to highlight one thing here, I would want it to be that comment at the top. Out of 20,000 HP North American partners, WI ranks number two in engineering certs. And when you do that and you in invest, you know, accordingly, then, you know, HP partner of the year and Aruba partner of the year, all those things start to happen because you're having better engagements, right? And you're helping your customers be successful. And that's ultimately what we're about. 
So that uh, James, that's all I had for WI. Ho hopefully that painted a picture, but certainly if anybody's interested, you can let us know. We're happy to hop on the line. Uh, Absolutely. And, and that idea of the partnership, uh, I want to come back to that with Rick and you a bit later on, uh, sure. because I think that that partnership story, I want to, to play a little bit more there. It plays into the teamwork as well, which I think is a nice run in with uh, Hunter Henry. So stay on the line with us, Mark. Uh, again, Mark DeChico there from WEI. Rick Banzi also online with us today. Uh, he's going to share his screen right now and bring up his deck again, the North America Primary Storage Solutions Business Manager at HPE. Uh, really, that means if it's storage, he knows about it and he talks about it. And I've had a chance to hear him uh, share some of the story in the past. And uh, Rick, you know, the, the modernization of not only storing the data, managing, making the decision on where it should be, where it shouldn't be. Maybe it was here. Let's bring it back there. I mean, there are a lot of decisions going on for folks these days. So uh, welcome. Thanks for being here. I want to turn things over to you for about 20 minutes so we can dive into uh, what people are thinking about these days and how HPE is really helping them modernize their data storage and management. That sounds great. Uh, thank you, James. Pleasure to see you again. And Mark, I appreciate this event. Uh, big Patriots fan and I'm looking forward to Hunter Henry a little later on. So very exciting here. Love to hear. I will try to be brief. Yeah, I should have been wearing my Patriots gear here. Um, but yeah, I'll be brief. I want to give you guys an update on what we're doing around storage for us in the HPE world. We are we have branded our, our latest storage. It's all Electra. So if I show you real quick, I'm going to talk about Electra. That's our storage family. That's the, the latest and greatest. And I'll give you the updates there, including a new family member, our Electra MP platform, which is is very exciting. I know we're going to do great things and, and together with WEI, we're going to be seeing a lot of action around the Electra MP product here. So without further ado, let's uh, let me set the stage a little bit and and just kind of tell you from an HPE perspective and from a HPE storage perspective, we really have been on what we call this cloud journey and cloud means a lot of things to a lot of people, right? But for us, we wanted to take the best of the cloud. What folks are, are saying, you know, hey, where I use the cloud, I like that ease of use. I like how easy it is to to set up a, a volume, create some some uh, some kind of scratch areas, maybe, and then and then kind of put your resources here and there with just some clicks of the button, right? So clicks of the mouse, managing storage should be that easy and that's what HPE said and that's what we looked at starting from the top that that was our goal to say we want our customers to be able to manage storage from HPE as if it was in the cloud and regardless though of whether they're buying it outright and just have it in their data center we want the ease of use of that and the management of that to be like they're seeing it in the cloud and and uh, really not worry about the equipment itself but just what they can do to access and put their data to use here so we do recognize a lot of our customers today i, I i'm assuming most of you all out there today you have this hybrid strategy where you have some data, some applications perhaps in the cloud, some on site, some applications that you're going to tell me, I will never move that to the cloud. And, and we get that, right? So every application, every data set is a little different and every customer is a little different. And that's why it helps when you have storage that recognizes that as well as a good partner like WEI that can, that can recognize that and help you individually here. So our our cloud journey, I guess I, I'd call it, it was, it's what, uh, what we've been on for the last couple of years. I like to sum up something that our CEO said from two years ago. So Antonio Neri, our CEO, said that he wanted that cloud experience for customers here. And he, he said, you know, it, cloud for him was not a destination. It was all about that experience. What I had mentioned about as easy as if you were managing data in the cloud, right? Do it from anywhere. Um, never have to worry about having the resources and having, you know, having the right uh, applications, uh, you know, getting the right resources there. That was our goal. Two years ago, it looked like it was far off in the future. Today, it is reality. And 
We have been talking for some time about our GreenLake cloud platform. What you see here is, is a snapshot of the entry page, the, the welcome page, if you will, for all things HPE, Re regardless of how, how a customer consumes or, or purchases from us, they are able to manage from one common cloud platform, and that's the GreenLake cloud portal here. We're showing on this page that you're man able to manage networking, the Aruba Central tab that you see there, storage, that's our data services tab, the second one in here, compute, we manage that on the GreenLake cloud platform through the compute ops manager that you see here. And then we have a lot of customers that are looking to go to a consumption-like model, something where you're paying as you go. You can measure that across our GreenLake Central, even have billing for different departments and, and really create that, uh, you know, that service provider kind of view for you at an individual customer level here. So this was the journey and, and we are here, as I said, for storage. I'll show you what that looks like on the next slide here. And storage, I mentioned it's all about our Electra portfolio. So our Electra storage all comes into this data services cloud console piece to manage your Electra models. And from there, we liken this similar to a marketplace, right? Like, a, like an Amazon marketplace, where now you're not only standing up and managing and, and, and uh, manipulating your arrays here with, with the cloud console, but you can also augment those and you can add new services. Some things that uh, we've worked pretty hard on in the last year or so have been our backup and recovery and disaster recovery tabs. And those are on the far left here if you're following along. I'll start on disaster recovery real quick. Disaster recovery through our acquisition of Zerto. You may be familiar with Zerto, uh, great software that provides disaster recovery, migration capabilities, really top-notch options if you're looking to create a disaster recovery plan, you're worried about ransomware-like attacks, things like that. Uh, that Zerto software and our disaster recovery option here is a great way to further your your uh, Electra storage here and to, and to further your strategy across the data center. So the idea is that you consume some additional services here. We do have a great number of reporting and you know, the ability here to even do some, some self-assessments, our cloud physics tools, something that WEI can help each of, your, each of you uh, as customers with to really look at your environment and, and recommend what some of the best options would be to, to, option, uh, to operationalize that and to get that in, a, in the best format. So this is common, one common management plane, if you will, now for all of our Electras, makes it very easy if you're buying multiple things from HPE. And it's leveraging our artificial intelligence. And if you know HPE storage, you know this has been a big part of our story, really going back seven plus years to our Nimble acquisition, when we started talking about this info site and artificial intelligence that can help our storage arrays get smarter in a customer environment. We've advanced that AI even further, right? Everyone has an AI story, I guess, right? AI is hot, but for us across the management plane, across the cloud console, AI can help as you're trying to decide which applications, which workloads would fit best on which pieces of equipment in your data center. We can leverage the AI in something we call intent-based provisioning to say, hey, this works best on this model that you have. You have the performance, you have the capacity you need, you can align to that application and into your service level agreements there. I'll transition now briefly into just the portfolio and a quick update, a couple of updates before I get to the brand new Electra MP that I hinted at here as well. The portfolio slide itself, this is the family slide. Electras, there's four models with the brand new Green Lake for block storage on Electra MP being the latest entry. 
no, I don't, uh, I don't work in the branding department. So these long names just roll off the tongue, but I don't uh, create the name. So don't blame me. Uh, but in all seriousness, our Electra family here, this, uh, this has been a tremendous, uh, this gives customers a tremendous option here across the Electra family. Moving from left to right, you do see a gain in, in functionality and in features and performance, and you can expect the pricing as well to slide from that left to right scale, okay? The Electra 5000, the Electra 6000, those were born from our Nimble acquisitions seven years ago. Those are the follow-on Nimble storage arrays. And the Electra 5000, very nicely priced hybrid array, both flash and spinning drives to get you a great price per performance and give you that headroom to, to be able to really store a lot of data if you're looking for a general purpose or just a secondary flash target, that can be your array. And as you move up to the Electra 6000, that is an all flash, all NVMe array. You'll see that both the 5000 and the 6000, we offer our 6.9's availability guarantee. So it's not just about the intelligence. It's not just about you know, how screaming fast some of these things can be. We want them to be resilient and we want you to have the confidence that if I put this in my data center, I won't have to come in on the weekends, uh, on, on uh, my vacation or whatever it might be. We stand behind that with our availability guarantees. And you, you'll see we have a 100% availability guarantee on the new Electra MP and our Electra 9000. So those two arrays are considered our mission critical arrays. Screaming fast performance, yes, of course, you'd expect that, but that 100% availability guarantee, you can stand by that to say, hey, you know, these are resilient as well. We leverage that artificial intelligence advantage for all of these Electras, and I'll talk to that more in just, just a bit. Uh, but finally, my last point on this, we have also... We have also made this so that you could buy these Electra arrays outright in more of a traditional CapEx purchase, or you can subscribe to these in a more of a consumption model and pay as you go on a monthly basis for the capacity that you're using. So lots of ways for customers to consume, same great features, same great management uh, piece and same management plane there, regardless of how you buy it. A quick update, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with our Electra 5000. I mentioned the, the uh, very nicely priced hybrid array. We had a new family member here come out in May, June timeframe. This is the half populated 5010. So very much the entry starting point here. Price to, uh, price to sell here, if you have a small amount of capacity, uh, starting out with as, as little as 22 terabytes raw, this can scale up from there, but it's a great starting point. You can see in the highlights here, this Electra 5000 and our Electra 6000, those ship from our Austin, Texas factory. So here in the US and they ship very quickly. Uh, so the 5010H, just a half populated, if you will, a way to start at a lower capacity point and a lower price point than what we had previously in the 5010. Okay, so one quick note on artificial intelligence here in case you weren't familiar with what I alluded to in our, our nimble beginnings for our artificial intelligence. Our AI that again has its roots going back seven plus years ago, this has solved customer issues to the point where our AI is opening and resolving and closing cases for our customers without the customer even lifting a finger. We've been able to do this. We have a tremendous data lake here that, that the AI analyzes. And essentially we wanna say, I don't want any customer to have an issue that someone else may have experienced, right? So we're, we're able to apply those kind of learnings. We've, uh, we've even evolved that across different applications. So we know a lot of the compatibilities and depending on what application you might be using, uh, we, can, we can look across the AI and across the data lake there to say, hey, this is optimally the best way to run 
Oracle or SQL or Exchange or whatever the workload might be, the AI can help you to really make it a self-driving experience. So that's common to all of our Electras, regardless of how you buy them. All right, just a couple more slides. I promised two slides on our new Electra MP. This is a brand new product that we announced at our customer event, the Discover event this year, if any of you were there in the June timeframe in, in Las Vegas. The Electra MP, the MP stands for multi-protocol. And this is brand new hardware that is supporting both our brand new mission critical block array that I showed you on the family slide. It's also the same hardware that's supporting a brand new file offering. So we're really excited to get back into the file world. This is something where from a file standpoint, we are leveraging the vast software to give you high performance file capabilities for your unstructured data. A great piece to augment any of your block storage. And we know file storage is, is growing and is, is very prevalent across organizations here. So we, we can leverage that MP, Electra MP platform. And you can run the file uh, OS on there, the operating system, or the mission critical block OS on there as well. James, I feel like I'm getting the hook, but I've got one more slide after this. Now he shakes his head. He's not going to call a challenge flag quite yet. I've got to work in some more football references. Now I'm really down to the last two slides, I promise. <laughs> so our mission critical Green Lake for block storage, which sits on the new Electra MP hardware. This again, carries that 100% availability guarantee. Some of the most advanced features that we have in regards to replication, being able to replicate from one data center to many, many data centers to one, the ability to do synchronous replication and asynchronous replication, screaming fast Oracle, SQL, SAP kind of performance. If you have those big database kind of workloads, this is the array for you. And of course, leveraging that AI advantage, the artificial intelligence advantage here. So the platform just launched mid-year. We have a uh, an update coming in October, just a week away. Very excited that we're going to have uh, a third option for controllers in there. So we will have three different sub-family menu, menu members here. And uh, we're also adding expansion shelf options as well. So we can scale this up to over a petabyte of raw storage. But on top of that, because of our great efficiency, we also offer a store more guarantee, something right in the middle on this slide here. This is a guarantee for all of our Electra all flash arrays. We, we offer store more guarantee, which is a no sign letter. It's, a, it's not a lot of legalese, but you get this with any of the Electra all flashes where we promise to get you a four to one effective to raw capacity in your Electra arrays. So we really give you more headroom. It gives you more, uh, more peace of mind here as you start to, to get capacity that we're leveraging our deduplication and our compression capabilities to get you that four to one advantage here. We also leverage clones and snapshots and some things along those lines, but at the end of the day, you're getting tremendous efficiency, more than just the raw capacity in the box. I mentioned the availability guarantee, so I won't hit that one again, but we also offer a 30 day satis satisfaction guarantee. And uh, I know, if you start off with the right partner, you're starting off with WEI here, you're going to be scoped and you're going to be looking at your environment and, and we're going to get you into the, like, the right Electra. So I'm confident uh, that 30 day satisfaction guarantee won't have any bearing on you, but again, more peace of mind as you look at HPE storage. I hope I stayed within my time slot here, James. I am at the end. I'll, Talking I'll tell New you England this fast, the two minute uh, offense, if you will. Yeah, no, I know. I'll tell you, I, I watched enough this weekend, college and pros uh, clock management was a bit of an issue for some teams out there. Uh, you did well, Rick. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Let me do this. I, one of my big takeaways as I was sitting here listening uh, was the flexibility. 
that that it looks like HPE is providing to folks out there. Here's the challenge, and, and I want to go back to that idea of partnership with you and Mark both for a moment here. Um, the challenge is so many IT folks that I talk to, usually it's out in person, a little conference here and there, and they're like, hey, I'm out here for 24 hours. I got to learn everything I need to learn. And then I got to go back and deal with the day to day. And so their ability to sit down and research in detail, the Electra offerings uh, can be a challenge for a lot of these IT teams, especially the smaller shops. That's where I believe, and I see so many more teams are saying, I can't do this on my own. I need a partner like WEI out there to help know what's going on. So when we talk, they can say, this is the play for me. Rick, just talk briefly about the importance of, uh, a partnership and working with a partner in the storage landscape these days. Yeah, I think Mark, you hit on it early on, right? WEI with the the engineering bench that they have, you're getting that one on one or or, or more uh, customer centric kind of view because it's not just what the customer is dealing with today, but we want to look ahead too. We want to try to, you know, be smarter and anticipate what will your needs be a year down the road? You know, is this still going to be the right storage for you? And, you know, and it also comes into play, what else is in your environment? Every customer has a lot of different applications and some may be really old homegrown applications. Uh, you know, someone that's been around and seen it like like WEI has and, and has that expertise can really steer a customer a, away from, you know, trouble in there. And Mark, are you finding a lot more of folks, as my experience has been, they, they really do want uh, a leader in their partner. They want someone to do a little more. Tell, tell me this. I just don't have the time to do all the research that I may want to do, but I can't. I need you to do that for me and really prescribe what's going to work because you know their business. Is that where you have a lot of your relationships? Yeah, a million percent, uh, James. So there's, there's a couple of things there, right? Um, you know, uh, we know our clients well, um, we're good listeners and, and uh, certainly bring forward that engineering bench that Rick was talking about. But, um, you know, a client might have a need for, uh, you know, upgrading their, their storage, right? And, and that happens periodically, but we have people um, that live in a, uh, a perpetual state of, of doing these sorts of implementations. So there's just so much that, you know, clients can learn, um, you know, just by talking with us and, and working together with us and we can help share best practices because we've seen it and we see it time and time again. So, you know, let us share our knowledge. Let us uh, help you have a good experience trying it. Um, you know, there's the, the risk free, free um, you know, uh, sorts of implementations that we can do with you to make sure that it's the right tool and give you confidence. But yeah, lean on us. We're happy to work together, collaborate for sure. Mark and Rick are going to hang with us for the remainder of the time. You might even see him a bit later on asking some questions of our featured guest. Uh, so, guys, hang through here. Uh, WEI.com, ever so briefly, just to remind you to head online, WEI.com, for more information. I'll give you a little more uh, kind of reach out information towards the end of our event. But with that, uh, we're going to adjust our platform here. One, we're going to bring on Hunter Henry, again, tight end for uh, the New England Patriots. We're going to get his uh, video open and his audio feed going going and then we're also going to change the platform so that you all uh, can go ahead and release your video feeds as well if you wish stay muted for those of uh, you in the audience until I call on you. And again, the best way for me to call on you is use the raise your hand function in uh, Zoom here. That'll put a little icon next to your name and then I'll be able to call on you and get you into the program. So cool. I see Hunter there. He is unmuted. Uh, Hunter, how was it being back on uh, the field? Uh, you know, week three, you got your first action. Uh, tell me just how you were feeling as, as a person being out there again with the team. Yeah, it felt good. It felt good. We, uh, We've had some hard fought battles already early in the year. So uh it felt good to have another hard fought battle. Obviously, a division game against the Jets and uh finally getting a win. Uh, we've lost some close ones early. So winning a close one was nice. Probably made it a little too close, but getting a win no matter the fact is is always good. Tell me how the team, how a team feels, you know, too close. Uh, hard fought games uh, you get to game three what was the mood of everyone was it oh we got to win a lot of pundits oh they got to win now if they don't win now that's it or do you just take it one game at a time hey we win here we build upon it what what's the mentality that you all as, as team members and, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about being a captain what did y'all bring to it uh, before that game 
Yeah, it's it really is one game at a time, like you said. You, you you have to approach it like that. You have to approach it week by week by week. I mean, it's a long, long season. You can't get too high. I mean, even if we were two and zero, you you have to attack it that with that same mindset because every week's a different week. Every week's a new challenge, so you kind of have to attack it that way. I mentioned captain first year as a captain here with the Patriots when that uh, honor was bestowed upon you. Uh, one again as a person. How did you feel? And then I want to talk a little bit about how did you kind of prepare to take on that role? But first, just as a as a person, as a teammate, how did you feel about receiving that honor? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an honor, man, uh, to all your teammates and your peers are the ones that vote on that. So it's an honor to kind of, you know, bestow that because, I mean, it's it's kind of just a respect and um you know they're the ones voting for it so obviously i earned something in their eyes and so just trying to step up and be a leader um continue to be myself uh i feel like i've been a leader maybe not been the captain per se the last couple of years but you know still trying to you know be that leader on the team and you know now have the actual c uh, of being the captain this year are you that loud in your face, grab my the face mask, raw them up type of leader? Or are you, hey, I'm going to do my thing and I want you guys to follow what I do. Quiet, pull them aside, a little something, something here and then back at it. What's your style of leadership? Yeah, I don't I don't do much raw, raw in the face. Uh, that's not my action. Um, I'm more of a follow by example, um, lead by example uh, kind of guy to start off with. Um, and then I think I'm a relational guy. So I'm a big, smaller group, um, building relationships with guys and really kind of pulled them to the side, talking through things, how I see things, how I can help guys. Um, that's kind of where I thrive. I think obviously I can step up in that role and, and talk when I need to. Um, but mainly follow, you know, lead by example, um, and then kind of just deal with guys and, and building those relationships. Uh, we talked to your center, David Andrews, uh, a week or so ago, and I forgot to ask him. So I'm going to ask you on the captain front. Do you guys really, so does he focus on the line? Do you focus on tight ends, running backs, receivers, kind of offense play, or do you have free reign to really, you know, pull someone from the defensive side or special teams and, and give them something when you notice, you know, that guy needs that pick me up. He needs a little something, something. Yeah, I think it's the full team. I think we we focus more on the offense, um, kind of being the leaders of the offense. I would say that's our domain that we kind of focus on. But obviously, if I, you know, we're still going against our defense at some point or you see something that you could help maybe someone in the secondary or the linebacker that they're doing, maybe that's kind of giving a tip or whatever it is, um, you're always there to help um, because, I mean, we, we all need help. I mean, the defense comes to me about different things they see to help me week in, week out. So, this is a complete team sport, so I, we need everybody. So I try to help out as m many guys as I can. What about your relationship with uh, all of the coaches, right? It's not just a head coach that runs a team, but there are so many important uh, unit coaches out there. Uh, do you go to them sometimes and and ask them, hey, how might I help get to this player? And and it might not just be this year, but in years past of of leaning on them for mentorship uh, to, to help kind of develop your own leadership style and how you can help team members, whether you're on the field or off. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... I definitely lean on all different kind of guys. I think we have some, we have some great leaders on our team. Um, you know, guys that have been around like David, like you mentioned, um, Matthew Slater's another guy. I was around a guy, another guy named Devin McCourty for, for a couple of years too, who was a, who was just an incredible leader. So I've had the mentorships from some guys ahead of me, a few years ahead of me that have kind of been in my shoes um, that I've watched from afar and learned and asked questions to um, so I, I think having those guys as examples and someone to lean on as a mentor um, is huge for myself just as a leader and as a player, as a person. Um, those guys were huge for my development. I want to remind everyone in our audience, if you have a question for Hunter, hit that raise hand button. And it'll show up in my queue and I'll be able to call on you. All right. I want to get one more David Andrews question in here. <laughs> uh, did you know, Hunter, that uh, pre-draft, your very own David Andrews, your center, ran a 5-1-2 40-yard dash. Did you know that? I did not. I did not know the 40. I honestly don't know anybody's 40s pretty much. Uh, you know, once you kind of get past that, you just kind of roll. But I, I could see that. I could see a big, big man moving. I was going to ask you, do you think you could still put that number up today? 
Um, mm, I don't know. I don't want to doubt him. Um, I think <laughs> if we give him some time to train for that 40, yeah. I think, you know, we the 40 is like you you kind of become a track athlete. It's not as realistic as people It's not think. realistic to the game, yeah. Um, but if you gave him a couple a month or two to train, I think he would be – I think he could get it. He'd pull it right there. Uh, last thing on on kind of the, the captain front, and then I want to talk a, a little bit about uh, adversity and overcoming that. Uh, do you, as team captains, do you all come together at times and and meet and and talk about a unifying strategy forward, uh, a mentality for the team, how to keep that uh, at a level throughout the whole season? What does that look like? How do you guys work together as a team? Yeah, we have a captain's meeting every week, uh, kind of towards the end of the week, just going into the weekend, into the game, that we kind of talk through everything. We talk through offense, defense, special teams, all the things that we need to hit, all the points, all the, you know, things we need to hit in the game for us to be successful, for us to win. Um, and usually when we hit those points, we usually win. Um, so it just kind of talking through things so that we can keep each other accountable um, and keep each other, you know, going in the right direction. So we know what, you know, we can keep the defense accountable, keep the special teams accountable, the offense um and just kind of hit our hit our marks for the game let's talk about overcoming adversity and, and this has business implications because a lot of uh, our folks on here uh, go through technology uh, projects they roll out a new system and it doesn't work uh there there might be a failure somewhere and and so they have to pick themselves up and get right back in there and get the project back on track uh or they have a, a success and then they have to you move on to something and, and maybe that one doesn't work you've had some setbacks career-wise you've had some injuries that have put you on the sideline a couple seasons um what was it just overall in general we'll dig down a, a bit deeper but overall what has kept you uh positive when you get that injury and you're like, ah, now I'm on the sideline again. I got to rehab this. I got what's been able to keep you going and positive through that to still be sitting here today, still be playing here today. Yeah, there, there's a few things. Um, I think it's my faith first and foremost. Um, my faith in God, my faith in Christ uh, keeps me solid, keeps me grounded. Um, it's so steady no matter what's going on in the world. I think secondly is the people I surround myself with um that is a support system um a team uh, a small group of people that just keep me accountable keep me who i am no matter what um and then i think hard hard work is kind of that last thing that puts it all together it's just continuing to to work hard and grind through it i mean you got to learn from that experience and then keep going at it and keep attacking at it um you know i've, I've been through my fair share of injuries and there's many times that you're in the middle of that and you're like I just, I want to be done. Uh, you know, I want to give up, uh, but it's that just continuing to push, continuing to uh, strive to keep going um, that I think is is huge in those moments of just kind of being in that valley. Last weekend, I think a couple people saw you go to the sideline a little bit, a little worried, but you looked like you were fine. Everything is good health-wise right now? Yeah, we're good. We're All good. right. Good, good to hear. Um, when you are, a team member that is not out there on the field and, but you're still a part of the team. What are some things that you have tried to do during those times to encourage the rest guys? Cause I think that's something that a lot of us don't see as fans. I mean, we see the guys, you know, they're not dressed around the sideline. You, you hit the pads. Hey, good job and everything. But, but what else? I, I I've got to believe there's a lot more to what you're doing on the sidelines behind the scenes throughout the week. So what are some things you've tried to do to help continue to drive your teammates forward, get them better when you haven't been able to perform out on the field due to injury? Yeah, I think it's it's just being an encourager, man. Just being there as a guy that can pick things up as as much as you can, even when you're down. Like, there's someone else that's probably down um, and going through something, and, and maybe so, somehow I can put a smile on someone's face. I can, you know, lift them up a little bit. You know, we we, we kind of are in a we're in a pressure based business for sure. Uh, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of demand for performance. Um, so when performance sometimes doesn't happen, it, it can put you down pretty fast. Um, so just trying to lift guys' spirits and just remember the, you know, like we said early on, it's just take it week by week, day by day, attack each day, um, attack each week. Um, don't get too high. Don't get too low. I, it's hard to say, um, but just trying to keep keep guys there and keep them as even-keeled as you can. 
Let's talk a little uh, football here as well. Steve put in a chat to me. So folks, you can chat it into me or again, you can hit that raise hand and I'll get you in the queue and I'll see it there. Uh, but Steve wants to know, one, are you a fantasy football guy? And if you are, who's your tight end on your team this year? <laughs> uh, I do. I don't play fantasy football, um, unfortunately. But I've heard, obviously, I've heard lots of uh, reviews from different people week in, week out. So um yeah, I do. I don't play, um, but hopefully I can perform a little bit for certain people that might have me for folks and get that uh, that stuff out there. What, what if you played? Would you pick yourself or are you gonna pick someone else? Of course, I'd pick myself. I always bet on myself, man. Come on, there now. you go. I'm always betting on myself. <laughs> I appreciate it. that's good. Um, on uh, the football front, I got a couple of things that I was uh, thinking about. Uh, you're a Razorback. That's where uh, you spent your college years. And I see the smile comes on his face when I mention that. Do you get back two games at all during the season? Or is it just too busy with the NFL schedule to be able to make that happen? Uh, what, what's the tie back with uh, Arkansas right now? Love Arkansas, man. That was uh, we got a long lineage of of Arkansas people in my family. My dad played there. My grandfather played there. I got I had two brothers that played there. So there's just a lineage of Henry's that have have gone through and played there. So Arkansas is near and dear to my heart. It means a lot to me. I take a lot of pride in the state. A lot of pride in in the sports there too. Um. I don't get to go back to games. I've probably been to one game since I've been in the NFL. Um, I never really got to see my brothers play. But this weekend we're actually playing in Dallas, and I'm kind of I'm kind of sad because we'll be flying out uh, on Saturday. But they're playing they're playing in Dallas too. Uh, right. The day before, so I wish we could have made it happen, but I won't be able to this week. All right. Well, uh, sometime the schedule, hopefully that'll uh, work out for you, and you get a sneak over there and uh, check it out. Yeah, would, would would Arkansas be a retirement home place for you? Is it go back to your roots when you're done playing ball? I, th I think it will be. We'll see. Uh, my wife's from there, so I, th I think that's uh, that's in the works for sure. Uh, if I did uh, my, my background on you, you have a, a young boy in the family, right? I do. Yeah, I, do. I have a boy and I have a girl. Uh, okay. She might be making some noise. She's sitting over here in, in the corner, too. Uh, yeah. so you're a baby. Uh, I have a little girl that we just had. A, she's three, three and a half weeks old. Okay, that's that's why my reporting and uh, stuff wasn't up to date. Well, congratulations yeah, on that. I, I I ask because uh, if you settle down after football, is coaching in your career is that something you've thought about at all of going back either a little pop Warner with the little ones or you know high school call anything like that is, is coaching something that is on your your mind at all? I I, I don't see myself coaching to be honest. Um, at least at the, you know, this level or college level, I, I just can't, I, I don't think I can see myself doing that. I, I know the time demand, I think I see on it. So I just, I don't know. I mean, who knows? I, we'll see later on yeah. down the road. Who knows that my, my mind could change, but currently right now, I just, I, I couldn't see that. I don't see myself doing that. I probably will probably help coach my, my son and, um, just help out in that area. Um, but I, I don't think I would do it just for a job, probably. David brought it up as well. And he said, man, the 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 amount of time that you and he and the players put in, he's yeah. all now double that for the coaches, especially yeah. at the highest echelons of sport, right? Yeah. They, he just said that is, he's like, no, no, thank you. Maybe on the sidelines, right? The Pop Warner and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the, the, the demands there. Um, what does that do for someone like you and, and maybe let's talk about coaching here for a little while uh maybe one of the coaches uh that that you've had in your past that really inspired you you saw that coach doing something helping out maybe it was yourself helping out other players on your team and and inspired you and said wow th this person gets it about the whole aspect of coaching not just drawing up plays and going for the wins but a coach that just got it who was that person in your life Hmm, man, I've had lots of good coaches, lots and lots of good coaches. Uh, two come to mind, probably. One was actually uh, in my youth. It was actually an AAU basketball coach who was honestly kind of became my second dad. And his name was Walter Jordan. And he was just a great man and taught me so much. I was on the road with him a lot, too, just going to basketball tournaments, doing different things. And he taught me a lot. Um, just 
being a man at a young age too. I mean, obviously I learned a lot from my dad. My dad had a big presence in my life, but this guy was very influential too, just in sports and hard work and working hard and, and, and teaching me a lot, especially at a kind of a, in middle school, uh, kind of going to high school. So he was huge in, in influencing me. And then another coach would be my tight end coach, probably in college. Uh, his name was Barry Lunny and he was a new tight end coach had never coached tight ends. He was a quarterback, didn't know much. Um, so, and I was honestly just moving to the position as well. Had played receiver most of my life, kind of, and I was kind of transitioning to tight end. So we were kind of learning things together. And he was also just a, a great man uh, that kind of took me under his wing. And we kind of went through the grind together and learned a lot and really kind of made me um, honestly into the player I kind of am today and, and teaching me so much. Awesome. Uh, basketball. Uh, you're six five. Is that what I read? I am. Yeah. All right. So, the what, what was your position in basketball? And did the sport, did the sports choose ultimately what route you took, or did you make a choice? Did you have to say, "Hey, it's one or the other," and I'm choosing football? Yeah, that's a good question. I was a, I was like the three, four, small forward, power forward okay. in high school. We had a pretty good team, uh, runner up in state championship my uh, junior, senior year. So um, we were pretty solid and we had another guy on our team that played, uh, ended up playing in Arkansas. So we, we were, we were pretty, pretty solid team. I think really at the end of the day, I just started getting recruited in football pretty heavily. Um, and I think the sport probably chose and I kind of realized the route Probably wasn't going to be basketball, just my frame. And and I mean, I'm 6'5", which is tall, but for basketball, it's it's pretty average. That's a point guard. Yeah. <laughs> At least in the NBA, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, December 3rd. Do you know what's happening on December 3rd? Uh, I don't, actually. You're playing a football game. Okay. You know who you might be playing? Dude, chargers i know who i'm playing this weekend that's yeah. all i know <laughs> one at a time uh yeah. which is something we hear from uh, a lot of the athletes that join us but you are playing chargers kathy wondering out there from our audience are, are you is that a game that you get up for was it something that you got up for in high school when you had the crosstown rival in college when you had that uh razorback rival is it something that they get up to or is it hey it's just another game i gotta go out i gotta do my job what, what's the mentality yeah, it's uh, you definitely get excited for for something like that. The kind of reunion. I got to do it uh, a couple a couple years ago, two years ago. I got to go out to LA and play them and actually get the win, playing pretty good and get a win against them. So that that was huge. Um, and so it definitely will be exciting to have them come out this way, and uh, kind of probably play in the cold uh, a little bit late late in the year. So that'll yeah. that'll be fun. I'm I'm excited about it. It's always good seeing guys that I played with going against. Um, I've kind of already, you know, gone through that first one of playing against them. So this one will just be a fun time. Awesome. Hey, folks, again, if you have other questions you want, you can go ahead and type those into the chat to me. You can also raise your hand and uh, get you in on the conversation here. Uh, speaking of different places to play, uh, I asked David, and I'll ask you as well, uh, is there a uh, stadium? a place and this could be anywhere in your history uh but a place that you definitely would love to revisit whether it's just a visit for nostalgia reasons or go back and actually play a game again uh for david he loved the old confines of green bay and just the oldness and the history and all that he put praise on allegiant stadium and so far and all that great new facilities but he was a, a throwback to just the, the the cold and grimy uh where are you where would you like to to play again visit again a favorite favorite place you have played can't go wrong with Green Bay as well. Yeah. I think Arrowhead is a special place to play. The fans are rowdy. It's uh it's an intimidate it, it's a big time place. It's a big time atmosphere. I think honestly I would love to go back down south and play in the SEC a few oh, a couple more times. Okay. Um, I think that would be special, man. There there's just nothing like those tailgates all day and the fans coming in and it's just it's rocking like it's just LSU going to LSU or playing in Alabama or um, 
man, even Mississippi State sometimes would 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 come out. It, it, there was some there were some stadiums down there that were pretty special, and just brings back a lot of memories. Oh, and you talk about intensity. I mean, do, do you find what is your compare contrast between the intensity sometimes of the just the the die hard football college football towns and environment versus the NFL? Are are they very very similar? Some it just really depends on on what market you're in. Yeah, I think it. I think you said it right. The market that you're probably in, um, you know, it it. There's nothing like those college sports, the Southern sports, those tailgates, those kind of pride, the people that went to that school. So I don't know. There's just there's I, I take some precedent to SEC football. Um, you know, I think Big Ten football and it is big, you know, just the the pride, the tradition and all that stuff, too. Um, but just here, this, that football in the South, man, it's just there's just something everybody comes out, man. And it, it's it's special. That's that's what I hear. Um, let's talk a, a little bit of tech with you. Obviously, we uh, the first 30 minutes, we were talking about technology, the need to store all the data and access all the data the companies uh, create these days on the sidelines. Uh, how dependent are you on holding uh, those tablets and going over plays and trying to learn in real time either how to uh, attack that defense a little bit differently the next time you get the ball? or what, how, how does that play specifically to you as a player? Yeah, it's huge. It definitely helps. I don't try to overdo it too much because I'm kind of visual and I can really see it and try to replay it in my mind. But I, I like to go back definitely to those surfaces just to clarify either coverage or front or blitz they did maybe. And so that, you know, later on in the game, if we see it again, I kind of can know that it's coming because usually teams will kind of repeat things as as the game goes, especially if something's successful. Um, they'll come back to it later in the game. And so you you got to ha- kind of have to see that so that the next time it comes up, you can kind of nail it and maybe hit a big play. One of the things that we talk about with data and storage and all that is securing the information. Steve kind of has a, a security type question for you. And it's this, it was that uh, block field goal play against Miami. Looked like it was right. A special play, plan play. How do you guys go about uh, coming up with some of these schemes, special plays, things on special teams and and not let that leak out, not have the other teams see it. Is that all done before you travel? Do you do any of that while you're doing walkthroughs, run throughs a day or two before the games? How, how do you keep all that kind of close knit, but still practiced enough so you know that you can execute? Yeah, I think you got to give props to probably our security team because we, uh, <laughs> We do a lot of it in practice. We try to make sure that, you know, no one can see in, no one can see see what's going on. But just working on those things in practice every day, uh, day in, day out, talking about it in the meetings and kind of just taking things and, and going with it. So, um, you know, you work on it and sometimes you'll work on it week on week on week on week and put it in a while ago. Um, but, you know, you won't run it for a couple of weeks, but you've kind of, you've kind of repped it a few times and then you're, you're ready to go come game time. What about players? What about yourself? Have you developed a play or two or more that you bring to coach and Hey, can we do this? Do you, do you guys get involved in much of that at this level at college? Is that anything that, that again, it's a little behind the scenes. I don't think a lot of us know about your input on certain plays and uh, against certain teams. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if I see, it's usually something like I'll see from another team or maybe watching a game in college or something like that you see, like maybe a tight end did. And it's like, man, that that could be pretty good. I mean, obviously it has to be a certain coverage, has to be a certain front sometimes, like you have to play certain teams. But uh, if you just kind of, we'll definitely bring things that, you know, you need to attack defenses in certain ways uh you know i've seen a lot of different coverages a lot of different defenses through the years and so there's different things that i know that can work um and so you, you try to bring those things so you can be successful come sunday when trades when uh you change teams do coaches come down and do a little debrief and say all right tell us what you know uh and and try and you know learn a little something especially when they gear up for that maybe that first game back uh they definitely will ask questions. You know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's, it's over the top. Uh, you know, the, you can, you can learn a lot on film um, yeah. and, and watching it for sure. I think that's where you're going to learn most, most of everything. Obviously some things can help, but 
I would say mainly it's going to be watching the film and, and kind of really dissecting all that. I want to remind the audience that we do have some signed memorabilia that will be uh, shared and given away to a, a winner. We're going to go through the reg uh, lists after that, and we'll be drawing that individual and get some stuff out to you. So uh, we'll be in touch after the event for that. Also, I'm going to give you all some contact information to reach out to the WEI team when we do wrap up. Uh, Max on with us, chatted in a question for you, and he wants to know this, Hunter. He wants to know uh, your uh, advice for a young injured athletes, someone that is recovering, uh, you know, it's different when we're adults and it's different when we know that we've got the power of an NFL organization behind us. It's going to rehab us, get us back out there, et cetera. But, but youth players, uh, that can be uh, hard. What advice do you have for a younger player that's dealing with some injury, uh, to, to get through, to focus on how do they keep their chin up? Um, I think first, I mean, you're young, you know, your body is going to is very resilient when you're young, man, like you can recover a lot faster, come back from things a lot faster. I mean, I think that's what helped me honestly early. I was, I was hurt a lot when I was young. So I bounced back a lot. So to remember that, that like, you're going to, you're going to come back from this, like, you're going to be okay. Things are going to get better. And like, trust that. I think the biggest thing is trust the doctors, trust the physical therapists, um, find a good therapist or something that can help like rehab you and bring you back. Um, I think that's huge. And like staying up on your exercises and staying up on everything, like trying to be the best you, um, I mean, getting strong and getting everything back because like, you know, especially young, like you can be lazy and not like keep up with everything, but if you can keep up with your exercises and keep up with everything that, you know, you need to do with the therapist, I think that's, that's huge and on getting back, especially being so young. Yeah, dedication to the uh, process, uh, eating right, uh, positive mindset. I mean, staying around. Uh, I think you you said something earlier, which just really keyed in uh, to me is the, the people that you surround yourself with outside of the uh, you know football family. It sounds like your family, your faith, others that you you keep the positivity around you that can keep you positive during those times. Uh, if you're around others that aren't quite like that, that can be a real detriment to someone coming back from an injury or just going through any type of hard time. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think the people you surround yourself with is it, it, it is a big determinant on who you are as a person. But just especially if you're going through an injury like that, it can it can definitely challenge. Like they can challenge you in ways and pick you up in ways. Like it's just um, your emotions are always changing when you're going through an injury like that. I, I know how challenging it can be. So uh, you you need good people around you. Uh, Zidane brought up a question in the chat here about, uh, obviously you guys knew that, uh, unfortunately what happened to Aaron Rodgers first week of the season. And you knew you were going into a Jets game without one of their, uh, star uh, NFL star players out there. Does that impact you guys as players much when you know that someone might not be there for a certain game or, or do you just anticipate this is the NFL next man up? that person there could be the one that puts, you know, a nail in our game. So we have to be prepared for everything. How do you, how do you not get overexcited that a couple stars might not be playing in the game? Yeah. I mean, obviously that changes their team a lot, but I mean, they're still, they were still a really good team, lots of good players. They have a great defense. And so we knew that they were going to come ready to play and they're at home. So, I mean, Anytime you go on the road in this league, no matter who it is, it, it's a tough, tough time. So we knew it was going to be tough. They got a good defense, good coach, good players, um, and knew they were going to probably step up and be ready. Um, outside of football, uh, do you grab? We got the Ryder Cup kicking off here, U.S. versus Europe. Uh, over there in Italy, uh, do you throw the sticks? Are you a golfer? That's something that a lot of guys start picking up. It's a little uh, less intense, at least on the physical side, than football is. But uh, what are some of the other? You, do you go back out? Do you still shoot some hoops uh, and run ball with guys? What What's your other sports activities? Yeah, I love golf. I love golf. I don't get to go out uh, enough, probably. I uh, wish I got out more. Um, but I love golf. I love watching golf. Um, dude, it's just, it's one of the most humbling sports that you can play. Uh, it's just <laughs> right. Especially mentally. Sports. Yeah. Mentally, physically. I mean, dude, I've been around, like, I would call myself a great athlete and I've been around some really great athletes and golf can just, it can flip the switch real quick on guys. And, and you know, it's just incredible. 
um it's it's a lot of fun too you know you get to get outside and, and be with people um and just hang out so um I, I enjoy golf a ton i don't play hoops as much as much as i used to uh just the pound i take on my body throughout Save the, you know, the knees. football season last thing i need to do is probably run around and, and play basketball all the time so golf is kind of my that's that's my outlet all right. Copy on that. that you, you want to put a prediction out there for the Ryder Cup? Team USA going to bring it back from Europe? It's going to be tough, man, especially being in Europe, man. I don't think we've won in Europe in a, in a, in a long it's time. But in a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. Uh, that, that would be that would be sweet. All right. Hey, what's the what's the rest of your uh, week look like leading up uh, until uh, your next games? Uh, I'm assuming, you know, tape and everything. A lot of that was done yesterday. Uh, you know, we're back full pads later on tomorrow. What's kind of the lead up to a week look like for you guys? Yeah. So um, Monday's kind of review, you know, recover the body. Today's our off day. Um, so this morning I'll kind of do some more re- recovery on the body and I'll spend some time. Uh, watching film, kind of getting ready for the next opponent and just kind of dissecting that. And then, you know, I got to fill in some time for some family time, uh, you know, just being off day just because you don't get a ton of time through through the, the rest of the week. So I try to spend time with my wife, my kids, uh, two kids now. So, you know, try to do that, fill that time in. And then Wednesday or Thursday are kind of our big heavy load days. Uh, you know, get in there early. You're kind of leaving when it's the sun's going down. Um, you know, you're still kind of recovering, uh, the later years you get in your career too, the, you're recovering from the game still, but also like trying to get ready for the next opponent and, uh, just getting your mind right, trying to, you know, get your body right. So the Sunday comes, you're ready to fly around. Um, so then Friday comes, you're, you're usually feeling pretty good. You know, you're installing the kind of last few bits of, of the game plan, um, going through everything and just kind of, you kind of have a fast Friday, fast practice, just flying through things and trying to get the, you know, everything in Wednesday. I mean, uh, not Wednesday, Saturday, you know, is a final walkthrough. And then you, you're usually either taken off to go somewhere or you're getting ready for a home game the next day. And then Sunday comes, man, and lights are on and it's time to go. Let's go get it. Uh, which means those Thursday weeks are tough ones because you don't get that recovery time. Is that one of those that you see to like, okay, this week's going to kind of be grindy when, uh, when we have those short weeks. Yes. If you get out of that Sunday game pretty clean before Thursday game, it's always, it, it's, it's a nice one because it's not too bad. Um, but usually you're pretty sore, but I would say honestly, by Thursday night, sometimes if you're, you know, just general soreness, you're usually pretty good by Thursday night. I mean, it's, it's, you're still feeling, you know, you're not great yet, but, um, you know, you're good enough. So you're just, you're out there just grinding it out and doing your best. No, I hear it. I hear it. Well, hey, really do uh, appreciate you being on board and, and sharing some insights in here, handling some of these questions that came in from our audience. It was great to get uh, some of them in there. I'm just scrolling back through the chat, making sure I didn't miss anybody that uh, wanted to throw something your way. And I think we got them. Uh, I think we hit uh, everything that people put out there. So we uh, we appreciate it. Uh, best of luck. Hey, I, now you're you're equal, right? Two kids mom and dad uh yeah. so uh enjoy all of that enjoy those uh th- you. you said three weeks so you get you get some snuggle time with the three week old which is awesome yeah. for you and uh enjoy that ride that's a whole different I, i've got three teenagers now and it's a it's a great ride to go through all the different sequences in life so i hope uh you you enjoy that and, and enjoy the time that you have with all of them for sure we wish you the best thanks man appreciate it thanks everybody for having me on all right, good stuff. Uh, folks, uh, glad that uh, we could bring this conversation to you there. And uh, it was great having Hunter on board. I'm actually going to bring uh, Rick uh, back on board and uh, Mark as well. Uh, you guys had a chance to be sitting here listening through there. So we'll let you get your, uh, I'll go ahead and hit these ask unmute cues so we can get Rick and Mark unmuted and back on with us. Um, cool conversation. Glad that we would uh we were able to have Hunter there. A big thanks to the WEI team, Mark, for putting that together and uh, bringing him on board. Um, the idea of, of positivity 
and having him uh, surround himself by positive people in teamwork. Uh, wondering, Mark, and, and uh, let me hit you. I think I might have to hit the uh, ask you to unmute button. So let me ask you to unmute. There you go. I think that'll do right. it now. Um, what, what's the kind of locked out there for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do the little uh, the ask gun. So we we got that. Um, what is the 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 teamwork and in, in, in how you uh, share amongst your other client executives and other team members there at WEI? How would you characterize your teamwork and how you support each other before you're out there supporting customers? Because I believe that if you aren't working together internally well, it's a hard pull to then support the customers through a, a long project. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you that we spend a lot of time together, right? Um, Mondays, we're, we're at HQ in Salem and just collaborating, telling stories, you know, what are your, what are your clients asking you? You know, what kind of projects uh, are they working on? You know, how are you making them successful? And then, you know, it's, it's really great to, to have that experience and then go tell those stories to other clients so that they can, they can do the same. So uh, yeah, just build upon uh, what you've done and, uh, and just, you know, make sure everybody knows that that is a core competency and that, you know, you're able to deliver for them. And, and, and Rick, at a, a larger organization like an HPE, I mean, worldwide, you guys uh, focus more of the teamwork, obviously with your group, and then like uh, you know, certain members are in connection with the other HPE kind of ecosystem, so that you all have the same charge moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. With, with the portfolio that HPE has, you know, compute and storage and networking it's not very often a customer is just looking for one piece. And a lot of times we uncover opportunities across, uh, you, you know, the networking side or, or compute side, or even HCI as I think Mark hit on early on. So all the teams coming together and, and the service teams as well to, to make sure we uh, can address each customer. I'm going to bring it back to football a little bit guarantee. And I got to tell y'all, I have one team that I root for, and that is my only team. I don't do fantasy football for that reason, because I can't go out there and take the Dallas defense. I can't take a commander's running back. I'm not going to tell you what team I root for. I can't get behind a giant's quarterback. Um, so I go for one team and one team only. And if y'all are listening, you know what team that is. Uh, Mark, do you do fantasy? And if you do, Who's your tight end? Uh, actually, I have Hunter as my tight end. I picked him up on waivers, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I think after week one, so I was in the right because he order. wasn't playing week one and two. He was out. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I grabbed him. I also have Higby. Uh, so from the Chargers, and <laughs> and so uh, I I kind of look at you know who they're up against, what the D's look like. But uh, yeah, I have Hunter and and uh, excited to have him. All right. Well, he's back on the field. I hope he's going to be out there getting you some points. Rick, are you a fantasy guy? I am. I like all things uh, fantasy sports there. Yes. And who's uh, who you do? Do you remember who you got as your tight end? I do. My number one pick, I took Travis Kelsey. Don't tell anybody. Uh, don't tell Hunter, please. <laughs> See, I was thinking about talking to him about who he might want up in these stands, sitting and watching a game with his mom, but but he's married. So he, of course, would want his wife and his kids there watching the game. So uh, no no Swifty action for uh, uh, Hunter. But uh, hey, good, good stuff, guys. I do appreciate it, folks. I hope all of you enjoyed this event here today. Uh, again, a couple of things for you to do to continue the conversation with the WEI team, whether it's on data uh, and storage and modernization there, uh, whether it's your continued journey to uh, the cloud. It could be other things, as you saw later out by Mark and all the offerings and services available from WEI. So go to WEI.com. Uh, also, you know, if you have a sales rep already in uh, place, a client executive like Mark out there, uh, you know, contact them, get out there, have a one-on-one -on -one lunch with them. Uh, love to continue the conversation there. And if you don't know who your WEI account uh, executive is, then we've got an email address for you, marketing 
at wei.com. You can reach out to the team there and say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I do. These are some of the things I need. Uh, and they can find the right team member to, to pair you up with. So again, marketing at wei.com to reach out for that and wei.com online for everything that you need to know there. With that, going to wrap things up. Really appreciate uh, Mark, you being on board with us. Rick, thank you for your support and help as well. Big thank you to HPE and Intel for co-sponsoring this event, obviously in partnership with our, our lead team here at WEI. James Hilliard, thanking you all for being here. Have a great rest of the week, and we do look forward to talking to you all down the road.